November, uh, coming up to the final few trading sessions uh, for 2017. Um, transition across. Okay, so I'd like to start the day by quickly just talking about some of the price action we saw yesterday. It was um, very lackluster as to be expected with US participants out of the market. So there was nothing particularly notable. Um, but this is something we were discussing um, with some of the trainees is that yesterday was not a really a day to get involved in the markets and particularly with some of your more volatile products because a lot of the times what you end up seeing is quite a bit of choppy price action and that's exactly what we saw in the DAX uh, starting the day on the back foot then rallying breaking through the 13,000 going up to test pivot this was pulling some people in but unless you're being really pragmatic with your exits a lot of people are getting chopped up on either side um, the DAX has been a fairly interesting product uh, most recently um, as we continue to see growth and optimism in the EU while DAX has been under pressure now for quite a few trading periods almost since the beginning of November we've been trending uh, down almost and this is something I'd like to discuss a little bit more in detail as we go through the brief but the point to note was yesterday's price action was particularly difficult and I think anybody um, who was trading this would have sort of felt felt pretty much the same um, and this is what you should expect when you have uh, well one of the biggest markets not participating and that's going to be the same today so I think if anybody was trading yesterday and sort of going in with full size trading in the middle of the range they've sort of learned their lesson and start to avoid that going forward um, but just having a look at DAX today we've gone to test yesterday's high uh, the top of the range now we've taken a bit of a tumble here uh, gone through the European cash open testing pivot having breached 13,000 uh, this level as a whole not providing much support resistance anymore um, a lot of wicks cutting through this candle but ultimately looking uh, for S1 levels yesterday's lows for the bottom of the range um, apart from that overnight what we saw was a CSI 300 tumble 3% now this was mainly written off as sort of technical trading, some profit taking, also coupled with the fact that we're seeing um, increased regulations in, in China to sort of curb the, uh, the growth of certain financial assets, but really nothing too much to be concerned about. There was no real filter through into other, other markets. It was more following suit with uh, some of the bond markets um, taking a fall in, in uh, China over recent months. Um, but looking at the euro as a whole. This is a product which I've been speaking about for a few weeks now. Um, where us, immediately after the ECB meeting where we saw them taper by over 50% of their QE program, we saw the euro come under pressure as Mario Draghi very magically managed to uh, manage the expectations of the market. But what we've seen most recently is uh, the euro has now gone to fully recover that sell-off and now we're testing right up here at the top of this little range. I find this fascinating because I didn't feel like this sell-off was justified uh, given the fact that we did see a tapering and we're seeing continued growth in the Eurozone which is ultimately going to cause an appreciation of the Euro as a whole and lead to further tightening uh, via the ECB and that was sort of reflected yesterday in the ECB's minutes where we saw certain members um, raise concerns about leaving the QE open-ended. Um, and the comments were open, um, some concerns were that the open-ended nature of QE might generate expectations for further extensions um, from September 2018, which from current perspective did not appear to be appear justified in the absence of major new shocks. And I think this is, this is correct. Um, the only thing that I feel which would stem the euro from continuing to rally on the back of ever-growing um, sentiment data and even uh, your hard data from the eurozone is Draghi's sort of obsession with inflation. Um, if, he can, if he sort of stops stressing the inflationary aspects and starts looking at other measures um, and then sort of reflects back and changes his communication with respect to that, I think the euro will then continue to strengthen. Um, in terms of the data we're looking at, looking at the Eurozone, the PMI numbers that came out in, for November just yesterday, we saw that the composite PMI came at 57.6. Expectations were for a reading of 56. This is a six and a half year high. The manufacturing PMIs came out at 60 versus the 58.7, which is a 17 year high. So the Eurozone continues to grow and I think is leading the way for global growth. Um, 
this coupled with optimism across the board, even so much so from the IMF about America's growth. These are the two largest sort of trading regions in the world. Um, continuing this global growth scenario that we're seeing, which is uh, seeing equity markets continue to rise higher and, and also support oil prices, which we're going to discuss in just a moment. Now, given these really good German GDP numbers, Eurozone PMIs, um, and sentiment data coming out of the Eurozone, um, we're seeing the Euro appreciate, and that makes sense for me. And I feel uh, if we can get through this level today, we may sort of grind higher, but really, as we've got low volumes, there may not be enough participants to take us through this R1 level or this previous high we saw here. But definitely in the next forthcoming weeks, I'd expect the, uh, this euro dollar currency pair to grind higher. Um, before we start to make a bit more of a move to the upside, what I would like to see is that the Fed get their final hike out of the way that then sort of takes the dollar argument out of the equation, then people start focusing on the euro. So I'd be looking for more towards the end of December for us to start to break and make a meaningful impact in getting anywhere through this range, ultimately looking for the 1.2 um, potentially uh, by the end of the year. Now, as we've seen the euro continue to strengthen, we have seen the DAX take a bit of a fall and a tumble here. Um, as the euro strength weighing on these European equities, I think, um, as we see powerful moves to the upside, yes, that inverse correlation between the DAX and the euro will exist, but over time, uh, undoubtedly, I feel that when the euro stops rallying so aggressively, then we'll see um, the inverse correlation break down the, and the DAX start to move more on a risk-on move with other global equities. And um, definitely, you know, I, th I don't think this is all-time highs uh, even uh, for this year for the DAX, and I think it's going to continue to ramp higher as the, as the German economy continues to boom in the face of relatively a weak euro. So that's your European equity markets. This is also similarly reflected in your um, euro stocks, which has been with a high degree of correlation with the euro and high degree of inverse correlation. Uh, sorry, high degree of correlation with the DAX and high degree of inverse correlation with the euro has been following. Uh, the same sort of price action seen in the DAX, uh, sort of breaching this previous range we saw here. Um, so the European equity market, I think, is going to be really interesting going into 2018. Um, relative to the Fed, the Euro, the ECB is definitely behind the curve, and this increased accommodation that we're seeing in the Euro, Eurozone relative to the Fed, plus much faster growing sentiment and hard data uh, means I think European equities are definitely going to be the markets to watch in 2018. Um, in terms of US equity markets, really not, not much movement, range bound as to be expected. One thing I would note today, and I'm sure Piers was speaking about this yesterday, is yes, we got low volume. That doesn't necessarily mean we're always going to see uh, low volatility. That means low volatility is likely. However, given the so time, we will be seeing market participants. As there's less market participants, you can sometimes see that this this thin these thinly traded markets can um, sort of break out and be quite volatile. Um, I think what reflected this the best was gold yesterday. We saw some really sharp moves in this market. Let me just bring this onto a 10-minute chart to give you a better indication of what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, the big wick here sudden surge higher just was a um, very misleading product yesterday as a whole and I think because by its nature it's quite thinly traded plus US market, market participants being out um, you can see this sort of price action even in more liquid asset classes such as uh, your S&P 500 so don't be sort of fooled into any short-term volatility seen in a singular asset rather wait for a sort of a shift in market sentiments risk on risk off dollar strength dollar weakness before getting involved but I'd say come midday today, we're going to see um, a very uninspiring uh, market movements. Just talking on this global growth scenario with the euro trending higher, European equities still pretty much, at, well, especially the DAX, still relatively high on the, on the, on the charts. Um, oil is definitely a mover to look at. And anybody was here for the previous um, OPEC cuts, this sort of price action is quite familiar as we rally on expectations that OPEC and OPEC and non-OPEC are going to come to an agreement. I think market expectation is for them to um, extend cuts. But last time when they when they first announced the cuts, we saw as soon as they announced their oil then dipped for 
a couple of weeks on the buy the rumor, sell the fact. And I think where where oil is trading right now, um, I'm done calling a bearish view on oil. But I think where oil is trading now, uh, we are definitely in for a buy the rumor, sell the fact type of price action. Um, this move higher in oil is also so it's a byproduct of OPEC and non-OPEC um, extension uh, cut extension of cuts. Uh, the global growth scenario, and then third of all, there was the the Keystone Pipeline uh, in the United States, which has been a bit offline. Therefore, once again, just limiting the supply of oil. Therefore, the price of oil uh, ramping higher. But a definite trend emerging here, having taken out this uh, 56 mark. If we go on a slightly longer time frame, 480. Let's just look at some key technical levels which are coming up. The $60, $60 handle, not far from where we're trading at the moment. So you really have to go back to sort of 2015 to start to see levels traded here. Um, but you can see we broke back and broke back into this range, which is defined by sort of your $56 and a half dollar. Um, now that we're in this range, you got the $60. Uh, handle <coughs> sitting basically mid-range and then above there you got the 56 point the 50 no, sorry 62.5 um, dollar mark so technically we are in a bit of a mid middle of a range there's no real resistance coming up anywhere near um, anywhere in the, in the near term really looking at the 62 dollar mark um, for any any resistance lines but the trend is your friend look, would be looking for a pullback and a continuation of this move higher for sure would be the best plan of action. Now, again, US market participants are out given that it is Thanksgiving weekend in the United States. So markets are going to be relatively quiet. And one thing I would want to mention is um, a very good correlation to be trading most recently has been um, your iron ore and Aussie dollar given the fact that it comprises of 20% of uh, their exports. and. What we saw is iron ore is up again this uh, today, um, having jumped 3.87% back to two months high. So this should be supportive of your Aussie dollar. Um, and what we've seen quite recently is as when we see these iron ore, iron ore numbers come out, if they've rallied or fallen, we continue to see a grind in the Aussie dollar as commodity prices were taking a hit. The Aussie dollar continued its grind lower. And now we've seen a bit of a bounce here uh, some upside seed in Aussie dollar here. Uh, be definitely looking for sort of a long opportunity at the pivot level. Good technical setup given the backdrop and a bit of dollar weakness seen in the other major FX pairs. Um, that's always a sort of good correlation to be trading and it hasn't really failed uh, throughout the 2017. Whenever we've seen iron ore be in the headlines, the Aussie dollar has followed that general trend um, sort of for the rest of your session. Okay, one final thing I just wanted to talk about on the headlines was UK consumer confidence hits levels last seen after Brexit vote. This is continuing um, decline in the soft data seen out of the United Kingdom post the Brexit. Um, and given the fact that we're coming into the Christmas season where people are buying gifts for loved ones and family, so on and so forth, it would be very, very interesting to see what the, what the data is like um, uh, in the beginning of the year to see what your retail sales were for the month of December. Um, in terms of a flashpoint which would see this sterling currency tumble quite aggressively, I feel like. If our Christmas retail sales are particularly bad, then uh, that sort of feeds into this one, one, one and a half years post the referendum where inflation is going higher, the consumer is being squeezed, sentiment is declining, uncertainty is increasing. Um, so in terms of flashpoint for the sterling currency, uh, I'll be keeping an eye out for any headlines with regards to the footfall being seen in uh, your retail space in the United Kingdom and then coming into January your retail sales seen for the month of December. So something to keep an eye on. Soft data obviously is a lead indicator towards sort of your harder data such as your, your uh, inflation numbers. Um, and then another interesting headline I'm sure Vassi emailed out this morning. Uh, Putin crowns himself king of um, himself OPEC king. Uh, this was just talking about just earlier we were talking about the oil prices and the OPEC non OPEC meeting and I think fair enough for him to say he crowns himself <laughs> OPEC king uh, is to be expected from Putin but he's quite right I think if we don't see an OPEC non OPEC agreement so OPEC plus Russia basically the most significant non OPEC member um, I don't feel OPEC is going to cut if unless Russia wants to join suit otherwise they're going to cut 
Uh, we've already, they've already got to fight market share away from the United States, but if they then have to battle with Russia as well, who will you know, very easily start to increase production further, um, I don't think OPEC will take the stance. So commentary out of Russia is becoming more and more important, whether they are leaning towards um, extending, extending the cuts. Um, now, if we see OPEC start to say they want to extend cuts, but then Russia doesn't really follow suit, then I don't think that that deal will go through. Um, so any comments out of this guy or your uh, oil ministers for Russia would be quite important to keep an eye on. Just having a look at the data calendar for the rest of the session. Um, trading economics. So we have German business climate, I, German IFO data coming out. So business climate, current conditions. So if we have a look at your business climate um, and put this on the maximum chart. In terms of market positioning, you know, we are, we've just been trending higher and higher and higher and higher now for, what are we in, nearly 2018. So that's eight years just continuing to ramp higher. So in terms of our market expectation, if we see a beat on the expected 116, then really very limited market reaction. Um, however, if we do start to see you know, 116, 117, I think given where DAX is positioned, that would be a more interesting market to keep an eye on as opposed to the Euro, which is already tracking quite higher. So between the Euro and the DAX, definitely be favoring um, a position in the DAX if we see uh, a big beat. Um, vice versa, considering the positioning of Euro and DAX again, if we see a big beat in German IFO, uh, then I really wouldn't be looking to trade the DAX. That's already at the bottom of its range and instead be looking to take a more short Euro position. Um, so if it, just recap, good numbers, trade the Euro, bad numbers. So good numbers trade the DAX, bad numbers trade the Euro. Um, I just want to finish ahead of the data set coming out. So uh, in terms of other data sets for the session, so ECB speaker 1030, I'd definitely be keeping an ear out for that. Another ECB consensus speaking 1230. So we've got some ECB members speaking. 1245 US market composite flash PMI. So this is your uh, PMI numbers coming out of uh, the United States. Uh, it's going to be difficult. It is U.S. data, but U.S. Mar market participants are out. So as we were discussing earlier, lower volumes generally can lead to low volatility, but have also um, also increases likelihood of um, volatility increasing if these numbers are out of line. So if you are trading that with the lower volumes, lower liquidity in the market, I'd be very careful. You may see some very aggressive uh, price action. Uh, German numbers just came out a little bit ahead of time. German IFO business climate reports at 117.5, consensus 116.6. IFO business climate reports 117.5, um, consensus 116.6. Okay. Let me just have a quick look at any market reaction. The euro really hasn't made any reaction to this data. This was good numbers. Let's see what the DAX has done. Yep, and as we were discussing, uh, beat on expectations, DAX was in a far better position. Uh, for a long and just taking out 13,000 having tested the pivot. So we're seeing some upside here. Um, so just to wrap up, 245, given the lower liquidity in the market, important data. Um, either the market will shrug it off or we'll see relatively volatile price action. So um, I'd just be very careful coming into this data set. And in terms of data, that will be the end of the session and the end of the week. And then we'll return back to normal market conditions um, on Monday where the US participants will be back. Okay, guys, well, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email or message me on Trading Live. Um, best of luck. M most of the data for this morning has come out. I hope people were keeping an eye on their DAX. Um, just on the final note, just having a look at market positioning ahead is quite key. This move we're seeing higher in DAX was very predictable because DAX was on the bottom of its range, Euros at the top of its range. Um, so this is something I'm working with some of the guys in stage two on at the moment. Um, but anyway, thank you very much and uh, best of luck.